Hi everyone. In my previous video, I explained how to write an abstract, what an abstract is and what it should ideally contain. You can find the link to that video in the description section below. But I got a couple of comments saying that I actually did not show an example of an abstract, how a good abstract should be written. So in today's video, I will show you an example of an abstract and how it contains the essential elements that an abstract should. Before I show that video or before I show that example, I'll quickly explain the essential elements of an abstract and then I will show you in an abstract uh, highlighting the different elements. Let's get started. So the essential elements of an abstract. First one, it should start with a brief sentence addressing the overall issue. Make sure you grab the reader's attention here. The second element should be that the main aim and the purpose of your paper or your writing should be explained. You should also explain the academic or the practical purpose of your research. Then you briefly describe the methodology. Highlight the main findings. Provide a statement of conclusion and then end with the implications of study. Remember, an abstract will ideally be around 150 to 250 words depending on what kind of a paper or thesis you are writing. Now, a journal abstracts vary between 150 to 250 depending of course on the journal that you are writing for. I am assuming that you will not get more than this. Alright, if you do then it is a benefit. The abstract of a thesis is more flexible, but still I think the examiners or the reviewers or the university guidelines will prefer that your abstract is not longer than a page and half, not longer than that. Normally people try to finish it off within a page. So let's see an example of an abstract and how the writer has included all the essential elements that I've just mentioned here. So this is an example of the abstract that I want to show you. All right, I'll give you some time to read this abstract. I don't want to read it because otherwise it's just me reading from the screen. What I will focus on once you have finished reading is how the abstract comes together, including the different elements that I've just explained. Let's see how. So let's take the first part of the abstract. All right. So here you can see the first part of the abstract, the reader hooks the reader and also provides a general description of the overall issue. The next few sentences describe the main aim and the practical purpose of the research. The third section explains the practical importance of the research. The fourth section, as you can see, explains the methodology, does not go too detailed. You can say it only mentions a survey and that's all you need to do. Just give a brief description because remember, like I told you before, you cannot explain everything in an abstract. You can only have a limit of words. So it will be challenging for you to explain everything in the abstract. That is not what the abstract is for. All right. And again, like I said, please watch my previous video on what the abstract should be doing. Then you can see the fifth section explains the main findings, not explains, summarizes the main findings. How it found a significant correlation between tolerance of homosexuality and acceptance of lesbian content, so on and so forth. The sixth section explains the conclusion or the contribution made. I would say think about the contribution that your research makes because that will hook the reader. That is what will make the reader want to read the rest of the remaining paper. And the seventh or the last section you can see how it explains the implications. What many people do in implications is they write the limitations of the research or they write the area of future work. I however do not, uh, I am not in favor of highlighting the limitations of research in the abstract. I think that should be done in the discussion section. The abstract should be purely to capture the reader's attention because see most of us as readers 
and if we are reading hundreds of journal articles from the abstract itself we make the judgment of whether we want to read the rest of the paper or not therefore the abstract is not the place where you start highlighting the flaws of your research or the limitations of your research so i would suggest in the implication section show how you considered the implications of your research or the practical impact of your research or how this research can be taken forward to make it much bigger than what you presented so if i put this all together in the next slide you will see how it comes together so you can see here i have put the entire abstract together but i have divided it into the different elements that i discussed at the very beginning so you can see if you see the abstract and you go back and read the entire abstract you will see how it all comes together element 1 is followed by element 2 then element 2 is followed by element 3 element 3 is followed by element 4 and so on and so forth the writer makes the best attempt of including all the elements keeping it brief and engaging and yet conveying to the reader what the paper is all about abstract writing comes with practice you cannot become expert abstract writers overnight however the more you write the better you will get at it abstract is normally written at the end of the paper once you have finished the entire paper or the entire thesis it is then you write the abstract when you have a clear idea of what your thesis or your research or your paper is all about so it will be easy for you to highlight each of these individual elements because it will come naturally to you as we progress i will show more videos on different examples of abstract so that you get an idea of how it can all come together and include all the essential elements let me know what you thought about this video i look forward to your feedback and comments thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the channel bye for now